going to speak and what I'm entitled. Spiritual fast forwarding and rewinding. Hallelujah. Yeah. Spiritual fast forwarding and doing what? Rewinding. You know why you have a videotape? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Okay. You fast forward to where you want to go and you can rewind back to where you want to sit. Right? When we are playing the video, Abby, am I speaking? DVD. Yeah. All of us have it. We put it in, we look at the thing and say, no, I don't want to watch that part. Let's fast forward it to where I'm going, right? Yes. And then, if we miss something, maybe you went to the bathroom and there is a show somehow, and then you miss it. You go back and say, no, let's rewind it. I want to see what happened while I was gone. And so also in the spiritual, there can be fast forwarding and there can be rewinding. Are you hearing? Yes. Fast forwarding. That means fast forwarding miracles and a rewinding of lost opportunities. Hallelujah. Yes. Fast forwarding miracle and a rewinding of what? Lost opportunities. You are going to see in the scripture, the book of John chapter 2. I'm going to take you to two places, about three places, and then we'll close. Hallelujah. The book of John chapter 2. The Bible says from verse 1, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servant, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six pots, there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, containing 20 or 30 gallons each. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the Head waiter, so they took it to him. When the head waiter tasted the water which had become wine and did not know where it came from, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says it came to pass. It was three days after Jesus has been ministering. And Jesus entered into the Galilee to a wedding. And in that wedding, Mary also, the mother of Jesus, was present. The Bible says, I know many people always, when he talks about the miracle, everybody wants to talk about wine. Amen. Hallelujah. But that's not really the purpose of this scripture. Amen. All right. The Bible said Mary was there. Mary was present, which means that this occasion was more of a family occasion. This occasion means that there are it is a familiar people. It's people that matter. Hallelujah. That means it is if if it can concern Jesus, that means it is an important occasion. Hallelujah. That means one way or the other, it's a relation. Hallelujah. So the Bible said Mary was there, Jesus was there, and they were having party. Normally, the Jewish custom wedding lasted for one week. Today, we don't do one week wedding. Hallelujah. But in those days, they do one week wedding and every day, the bride and the bridegroom must provide every day for everybody that come for one week. So you can imagine the amount of money, hallelujah, that is involved. So, the Bible says on the last day of that wedding, while the wedding was still going on, something happened at the wedding. The wine ran out. It was an embarrass, embarrassing situation, both for the groom and the bridegroom. Hallelujah. It was so unheard of that during the wedding, what they were supposed to be drinking was all gone. Everything finished. Can you imagine you are having a wedding and then they come and tell you and say, ah, brother, so, 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 there's no wine. There is no food. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all your guests are still there. 
Amen. That was what happened on this occasion. But the Bible says Mary was so concerned about the people. Mary was concerned because he looked at it and said, This is an embarrassment, hallelujah, to this couple. The Bible says Mary went to Jesus. Now, we all know that Mary is the mother of Jesus. Amen. Mary raised Jesus as a boy and now as a man. Because the Bible says at this point, Jesus was 30 years old. Hallelujah. He was just about to begin his ministry. He was 30 years old. The Bible said, Mary went to him and speak to him as a son and said, son, something happened. It's just like if there is something that at the wedding that said, hey, boy, go get some drink. We need some more drink. That was what Mary did. Mary said, son, do something. There is no more wine. Jesus looked at, at her and said, what do you mean there is no more wine? What does that have to do with me? In other words, though Mary was the mother, Mary was, I mean, of course, very close to him, but at the same time, Mary know where the solution lies. At the same time, Mary knew that he is able to do it. He is able to do something about the case. Hallelujah. You see, what happened to a lot of Christians today is over familiarity with God. Most of the time, we blame God for not doing something, but when you really look at it, sometimes we are taking God for granted. We are so familiar with God that we know the next thing is going to say. Is somebody hearing me? Even though Mary was the mother of Jesus, but she never crossed the line. She never familiarized herself with Jesus. So much so that he does not recognize who he is. Because the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 35, when the angel of the Lord came to Mary, he announced who Jesus is. Hallelujah. He announced to her what will become of the pregnancy that she's about to take in. So she knew. The Bible says she went to Jesus and told Jesus, Jesus, you have to do something. Jesus said to her mother, the word woman there is like, dear woman, dear mother. Amen. My hour has not yet come. That means I know you believed in me. I know you want me to do something. But the truth of the matter is, it is not yet my time. It is not yet the hour for me to begin to do miracle. It is not yet time for me to begin my ministry. But do you know what? The Bible said when Mary spoke the word, he never asked Jesus, what are you going to do? Read the scripture. He never, she never asked Jesus, are you going to provide the wine or not? She just speak. When Jesus responded, she turned to the disciples and said to them, Whatever he tells you people to do, do it. In other words, all I know is that he must do something about the case. Is somebody hearing me? I don't want to know how he wants to do it. And I don't want to hear a no from him. But I, I am very sure and confident that he must do something. So whatever he tells you people to do, do it. The miracle must come forth. That means Mary saying that today, I know it's not your time, but we can fast forward the thing. I know it's not time for you to do miracle, but you can make an exception on this case. Amen. Is somebody hearing you? Amen. There are some things that you can talk to God about and say, God, you know there are some waiting miracle. You don't know. God that doesn't do anything anyhow. There are some times that it will make you wait. And it is at that time that you want to tell God, God fast forward it. Hallelujah. Amen. That was what Mary is trying to say to Jesus. He said, what Jesus is saying, Jesus, you have to do something. Jesus is saying, you have to wait because it's not my time. I can't do it. He said, no, you have to make an exception because this is a very important and urgent issue. I said today, the Lord will attend to your issue. I, am most I said today, the Lord will attend to your issue. If you believe, he say in the name of Jesus. I believe. The Bible said, Mary spoke to and said, whatever. In other words, I am not taking no for an answer. In other words, whether Jesus like it or not, in this case, there is an exception. He must perform the miracle because the wine is needed. The Bible said, Jesus did 
perform the miracle. I don't know what it is in your life uh, that seems that it has been standing for a long time. That seems as if it has, you have been waiting for it for a long time. But I pray for you today that the King of Glory will fast forward your miracle. I said there will be a fast forward. I said there will be a fast forward in the name of Jesus. Mary said, I can't wait. Not tomorrow, not the next hour. We need the wine now. Do you see it? Fast forward. It wasn't yet time, but God made it time. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. It wasn't yet time, but God made it time. I'm sure that Jesus went to God and said, God, see this woman now. If I don't do something, you know it's my mother. I have to do something quick. Hallelujah. Amen. And he make an exception. God is still in that business. That thing can still be fast forward. I know everybody is waiting in line, but yours can be fast forward. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. When you look at the book of Matthew, we are going to see it again happen. The book of Matthew chapter 15. Hallelujah. Yes. Spiritually, Mary control what happened. And that's what it is. And when you go into prayer, that's what happened. You are when God is saying wait, you are trying to say, God, ha, you have to do this thing. It's an urgent case. Hallelujah. Yeah. Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 15. Hallelujah. We're going to read from verse 21 real quick. Hallelujah. Are you there? Amen. Okay. The Bible says Jesus went away from there and withdraw into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciple came and implored him, saying, Send her away, because she kept shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord. But even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says this woman was a Canaanite woman. Hallelujah. A Gentile for that matter. The Bible says she came to Jesus and she said, Jesus Son of David, have mercy on me. I need you to show me mercy. My daughter is possessed. My daughter is bound. My daughter is in bondage. And I want you to do something. The Bible says Jesus gave the woman a silence treatment. How many of you have ever felt like that? Lord, have mercy on me. Jesus, do this for me. And it looked like as if there is there's no answer. It's like, I can't hear him from the other side. That is exactly what Jesus did to this woman. The Bible said, he ignored her. Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David. The Bible said, she shouted so much so that the disciples were annoying. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said, the disciples were angry at this woman and they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, you better do something. Whatever you want to do, set this thing away. It's disturbing us. Hallelujah. Amen. What came out of Jesus is surprising. The Bible said when Jesus opened his mouth, Jesus didn't say, eh, so what can I do for you? Jesus said to him, to her, I am not sent to you. Can you imagine if God said that I am not sent to you? That was what Jesus said. He said, I, I, I was sent only to the lost sheep 
of the house of Israel. In other words, you are a Gentile woman. You are a Canaan woman. You are not part of the miracle. We are not part of the plan yet. Because at that time, Jesus had not yet been crucified. So the Gentile has not been engrafted. So at that time, it was only focusing on the Jews, the Israel. So Jesus said to her, I am not sent to you. I am Mozanda Broshka. When this woman got this word, the Bible says she still hold on. He said, Keep on. At least now you are no longer smiling. Now you are talking. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's better than not talking. Praise the Lord. This woman said, Okay, we are getting somewhere. Jesus is talking to me now. I mean, he's not ignoring me now. Amen. He's not giving me a silence treatment. He said, Okay. Then Jesus said, you know why? Because it is not good to give children's fruit, children's bread to dog. In other words, Jesus abused this woman. The word dog eh, is an abuse statement. Ah. Is somebody hearing me? Okay, okay, let's let's put it in our days now. I am the pastor. God is doing miraculous things. God is healing through this hand and raising the dead through this hand. And then you come to me. I say, Pastor, I need healing. And I say, what's wrong with you? Do I have time for you? You are even worse than a dog. What are you going to do? <laughs> Some people have not even called them a dog. They are already offended. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. Jesus insulted this woman. But the woman didn't back and go. Mm. Ah, why? Because the woman recognized where a solution will come from. Yeah. The woman recognized that it is only at this spot that I can get solution. Yes. So it doesn't matter whether he whip me or he beat me or he call me animal or he call me dog or he call me snake. I am determined yes. to get what belongs to me. Yes. Yes. Is somebody hearing? Yes. A lot of Christians always miss out on this. Amen. They don't read their scripture. A pastor look at me like this. I'm gone. And God is saying, who is sending you out? I was just about to come and visit you. But you pack your load and go. Oh, goodbye. Because pastor offended me. Oh, well. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is true. The Bible says Jesus himself offended this woman. But the woman had a persistent, stubborn faith. Amen. Amen. He said, no. The reason is because the woman was focused. A lot of us, when we come to God, we are not focused. When we come to the house of God, we don't even know the reason why we are there. That is the reason why every little thing gets offended and then you go. The Bible says, Jesus called this woman a dog. And you know the response of this woman? The woman said, I know I am a dog. I accept. But even a dog hits from the master's table. Yes. Jesus! I accept I am a dog. I am a no good. Ah, I accept you are correct. But even a dog eats from the master's table. In other words, the master does not ignore a dog. So I have come to collect what belongs to me. Ah, how I many I mean, I mean, of you know what? Look, this woman did. It, that's what the Bible says. Jesus himself said it is a great thing. In other words, this woman said, I know it is not my time. I know I am a dog. I am anything you call me. But Jesus, I know you can still do something. Yes, yes. I know I am, you are not sent to me. But I still believe you can fast forward my own case inside. Yes, yes. In other words, you can attend to my case. Yes, yes. Ah, today, every unqualified miracle, yes. ah, they shall be fast forwarded yes. for you. I said the Lord shall walk them in. I said the heaven shall walk them in. I said the Lord shall walk them in. Hallelujah. That was what this woman did. He turned, she tapped into the spiritual. She understands where she's going. She understands that this is the only solution. 
are the only place I have. And so she was ready to take all the insult. Why? Because she knows she's at the feet of solution. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus said, I have never seen such a great faith. That you can see, stand in front of me. The woman was not distracted. When you want a fast forward miracle, you don't get distracted. When you want a fast forward miracle, you stay and be persistent. You have to have a stubborn faith. You have to have a focus. If not, you can get it. Because at the point when your miracle is about to be fast forward, is that time that hell will break loose and everything we want to make you angry and make you everything you can think of. Just because there is something that is in the, in the agenda of God that is working out. And so there is a commotion here and there to sweep you out, to move, 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 move. Is a life on the beat of hell. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, this woman persists. Persists. In other words, he was telling Jesus. He said, Joshua in his day, he, he give an exception to that Hamlet woman. You can give me an exception to my own miracle. Amen. And that's what the, the Lord did. Amen. Spiritual fast forwarding. May your miracle be fast forward. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The one that is about to come next year. May God give it to you before the end of this year. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we talk about spiritual rewinding, when you look at the book of Ju 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 Judges chapter 13, because of our time, let's just look quickly. Hallelujah. Book of Judges chapter 33. I mean, book of Judges chapter 13. Amen. Amen. Judges chapter 13 talks about when the angel of the Lord came. Okay. Do you have it there? Yes. From verse 2. From verse 2. Now there was a man now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have, and have born no child, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the eight countenance of the angel of God. Very awesome, but I did not ask him where he was from and he did not tell me his name and he said to me behold you shall conceive and bear a son now drink no wine or similar drink nor eat anything unclean for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death then Manoah prayed to the Lord and said oh my Lord please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we shall do for the child who will be born. Praise the Lord. The Bible says this man was a, was barren with the wife. There was nothing happening for them. And the Bible says a day came when the woman was in the farm. And the angel of the Lord came to him, to her. And announced to her, said, you are going to conceive. And from the womb, this, womb, this man this baby will be filled. Hallelujah. It will be it will be dedicated, consecrated to God. He says, so therefore, you shall not drink wine. You shall not do any abomination, any abominable things. Right from the day that you conceive. The Bible says at that time, Manoah the husband was not there. In other words, he missed the opportunity. Hallelujah. To meet with the angel of the Lord. He missed the opportunity to meet with the angel of the Lord. But the Bible said, when the wife get home, I told him all that happened. The Bible said, he said to himself, no, 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 angel of the Lord cannot pass me by. Hallelujah. I have to 
will be there. I want to know what happened. I know you told me, but <laughs> Lord Almighty, I want to hear it for myself. I want to see it for myself. In other words, I want a reclaim of that opportunity. I want God to rewind it. Let's let the angel come back again. Give me another opportunity. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. The Bible said, and he called upon the name of the Lord. When he called upon the name of the Lord, there was an answer. Because the Bible said, and again, just as he has prayed, the angel of the Lord came to him. Is somebody hearing me? Yes. What did he do? Spiritually, he rewinded the time. Is somebody hearing me? He did what? Well. In other words, he said, Lord, I missed the first opportunity. I want, to, I want you to go back to it. Because I want to enter into that opportunity. And that's exactly what God did. The Bible says, at that same spot, angel of the Lord came back again. And it was unfortunate. Because even at the second time, he was not there. Is somebody hearing me? Even at the second time, when he prayed, he told God he wanted the opportunity again. And God said, okay, I will give you an opportunity to see the angel. But on the day that the angel came, he wasn't there. And he was still the wife. The other wife had to go and call him. May you not miss the day of your opportunity. Amen. I said, may you not miss the day of your opportunity. Amen. The same thing happened to Joshua. When they were fighting, it came to the point where Joshua said, hey, Lord, I want you to rewind. No darkness. Today, it will be all day. I know it was supposed to be darkness. It was supposed, he said, he said no, 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 no. Let's rewind the day. So the, the day was rewind. Ah, my God. Yes. My God. Yes. When it's supposed to be dark, it was rewind. Yeah. When it was 8 o'clock, rewind to 12 o'clock. When it was 12 o'clock, rewind to 12 noon. Kalabos yeah. sunamos. What are we talking about? There is nothing that God cannot do. There is no opportunity that you have lost that cannot be reclaimed. There is no, there is no time that you have lost or that the enemy thing that they have gained over you that you cannot rewind it. For with God, all things are possible. Let's rise on our feet this morning. I want you to begin to thank the Lord because there is a recall, a recall and a reclaiming yes. of every lost opportunities and time. Where the enemy thought that they have cheated you and it is over. God is recalling the game. Masupra Damaska. There is a rewind for your sake. Masoto Bazita Baske. Mazika Bori Masunda Baha. Jeketo Bayando Boske. Lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Tell him, Lord, I thank you for understanding today. It's a spiritual understanding that you are going with today. Lord, I thank you for spiritual understanding that I have gained today. I give you the glory. Today, every pending miracle, let there be a fast forward. Every pending testimony, every pending breakthrough, Lord, fast forward it for my sake. Ah, fast forward it for my sake. Every pending testimony for my sake, Lord, fast forward. Ah, today, fast forward, fast forward. Whether it has been written that it is 20 years or it is five years time, but it can be fast forwarded to now. It can be fast forwarded to this year. Jesus said it is not time but I will do it. Lord fast forward my miracle. Fast forward my testimony. Fast forward my breakthrough. Fast forward. Kari kapariya masunda branda boska. Mandere babo soto makasa. Mande kobo supranda raboske. Re kabo sunda branda boska. I want you to begin to comfort now every lost opportunity I recall and I reclaim every lost opportunity every lost opportunity lost time and season I reclaim, I recall I recall, I reclaim, I recall come on reclaim, recall come on rewind it it can be done it can be done it can be done
done. He can be done. That thing can be rewind. He can be rewind. God can do it again. He can recall it for you. Every lost opportunity, every lost favor. Lord, I recall today. I recall it in my favor. Ah, Papa, rewind, 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 rewind. Every lost opportunity, every lost time I sit. Holy Ghost, for my sake, rewind. For my sake, rewind. For my sake, rewind. 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 Come on, pray. Holy Ghost, rewind. And the immigration, rewind. Maritally, rewind.